It was March of 1906 when Melvin came off the Singer factory assembly line. His new owner was a tailor from Russia who came to America to start a new life. And he opened a store in 1915 selling clothing and he used Melvin to alter that clothing for his customers. As the years go by, the family prospers and the son-in-law takes over the business and changes it to a music store. So Melvin is no longer used and Grandpa retires and Melvin retires with him around 1965 to 1970. The family begins to clean out Grandpa's tools from the store and they want to get rid of Melvin, but a grandson is sentimental about Melvin and fights to keep him in the family. So Melvin goes into a storage shed on the roof of the store and stays there for a long time. Probably 50 plus years Melvin's up there in storage. After those 50 plus years, the building has begun to deteriorate and the owner decides to close it down. Melvin has to go. I adopt him and he's a machine I've been hoping to find for a long time. It's a big job to clean up Melvin after sitting for so long and get him running again. I start by brushing out all the loose dust and lint and grime with, with brushes like a toothbrush or small brushes of some kind or another. Get him all brushed out first. And the way I usually handle some of the dry rusted areas that aren't real greasy is I'll use a, a 4 aught steel wool and try to polish those things first. If that doesn't get it, I might try something like evaporust to get some of the deeper rust. And then once I've got all the loose dirt and the dry rust off, I'll give the machine a good going over with some plain sewing machine oil just to get things started cleaning, see what the sewing machine oil can clean. And if it can't get that, and it's real dirty like Melvin was, I'll use a non-abrasive hand cleaner, something called Goop, works really well to gently rub away the rest of that grime. And that works quite well. Now when you get an old machine like this, the tension assembly and the hook assemblies are usually the most likely place where you're going to find a problem with the machine sewing correctly. So I always take those completely apart and clean them thoroughly. And I like to use uh, acetone on the bare metal parts, uh, like the hook area or this tensioner. You can see how that dark, black, almost grimy dirt, this acetone cuts through that really well and I use that typically on bare metal only. You do not want to use that on the finish of the machine. But you do want to take these two areas apart first. Um, I rarely or and have never taken a machine totally apart uh, but I do take these two areas apart and here I'm unscrewing the rest of the tension assembly and I have that nut on there to protect that, that split post uh, from breaking or stretching and you want to make sure you take care of that as you're taking that out of your machine. But I'll pull all of these off and clean them really well and after giving a good cleaning to the machine usually that's all you need to do if you have all the parts and they're all working correctly to, to get these running again. It's fairly simple. They just need a good cleaning, some good oil and uh, they'll usually run.
so after I got Melvin all cleaned up, I gave him a real good coating of fresh sewing machine oil. And he started looking pretty good and brightening up pretty well. And this sewing machine oil is very good for the machines. And you can't over oil. Uh, you, you really need it. And I got to test him for the first time. And he sewed perfectly right off the bat, of course. All these old machines have always sewn for me. Never had one not work. And when I have an old machine like this that shows a lot of use and wear and there's chip paint and some worn decals, I like to keep them that way just because it shows the history of the machine. It's nice to have them clean up and looking nice and have them in a condition where you can use them. But, you know, some people like to paint them. I don't. I like to keep them with their history. And Melvin can still use a little more cleaning, and I'll probably get around to that. But at least at this point, he's in a, in a way that I can use him and sew with him, and he's sewing very well. It's always amazing to me how these machines clean up so well after being a hundred plus years old, filthy, dirty, neglected. They, they really clean up well. It's, it's always amazing. It surprises me every time. And I've cleaned up quite a few. I have over 60 plus machines in my collection. I'm a treadler primarily, so Melvin does have a treadle base, and I'll be able to treadle him, and 90% of my sewing on him will be treadling. That's how I prefer to sew. And these industrial machines have a whole different kind of a bobbin winder and they're kind of made to keep you sewing at the same time you're winding a bobbin. You don't have to stop sewing in your bobbin, you can have it filling at the same time you're working on a project and it automatically shuts off. When I got Melvin, he had a, a, a motor on the back of him, a small domestic motor similar to this one. It was not a Singer brand, but it was pretty well uh, shot. So I am trying out you know, a Singer domestic sized motor on him because I'll be trying to use him for some uh, free motion quilting with a small quilt frame. But I do not recommend these small motors to be used constantly on these heavy machines. Normally on these industrials, you'll see a big, powerful motor mounted underneath the cabinet and or the tabletop. And uh, these little motors are really not meant to drive these big, heavy industrials. But I'll use it sparingly, and uh, most of my sewing will be treadles. So Melvin is back in action again and sewing again and he's sewing beautifully and he'll probably be sewing for many many years to come well beyond my life for me one of the joys of collecting these old beauties is to know the family history of the machines because they're so old they have a history and i enjoy maintaining that history and keeping it with the machines so thank you rick for saving grandpa's machine and letting me adopt him and i'll take good care of him